guys, Brett Weiss here and Daisy Dog. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It is super helpful. If you like cute puppies and retro gaming, you came to the right place. Now I told you guys I was gonna talk about why I skipped over Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. when they came out for the NES. Now, as many of you know, I got my Nintendo Entertainment System for Christmas of 1987. This was a parent level gift that I got from my older brother. I was 20 years old and he was five, six years older than me. And he bought me an NES with his, you know, he had a good job. He bought me a Nintendo Entertainment System. I was completely floored. And he gave it to me at my family Christmas and I was very excited. See the picture there? I was just speechless. Anyway, it was super exciting. And I got it in 87, so there were already the black box titles out. It was December of 87 when I got my console, obviously, because it was Christmas. And at that point, Nintendo had released 30 black box titles. Now, as you know, the black box titles are like Super Mario Brothers with that glorious 8-bit art. This was a drastic change of pace from the Atari 2600 games with their more elaborate paintings, which were also beautiful in their own way. These are stunning as well. The more honest, so to speak, artwork that sort of give you an idea of what the game art looks like. This pixelated Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. A lot of these black box titles released between 85 and 87, they included Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. and Popeye and pro wrestling and so many of these great games. The black box titles are a legendary part of video game lore. And then beyond that, they started releasing other designs such as Super Mario Brothers 2 with a more cartoon-like artwork. And anyway, why did I not jump on Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. for the NES? Because I had my system in 87 and these games had already come out for the NES. And I loved both of these games in the arcades. And I knew, I heard through the grapevine that they were both great ports. Didn't have reviews to read because the magazine market had crashed along with the video game industry in 83 and the magazine market hadn't really come back yet at that point. And, but I knew through talking to people that Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. were both great ports for the NES, but I skipped them. Even though my brother and I used to play these games in the arcade all the time and I loved both of them. Donkey Kong with four screens, great climbing game slash non-scrolling platformer, Donkey Kong Jr., another four screen game with great graphics, colors, beautiful, and but a different type of gameplay, more climbing, but with vines and things like that, and with fruit to drop on uh, creatures, a much different game than Donkey Kong while still being in the same genre. Two wonderful games. Why did I not buy these right away when I got my NES? Now I was being a little picky about what to buy. I wasn't just buying everything willy nilly. I bought what I wanted to play, what I wanted to own, and what I wanted to have beyond rentals. Now you would think these would be no brainers because I love these games and it would be awesome to play them again and again at home. Well, there are two reasons. Number one is, and this is the most important reason by far, I already owned Donkey Kong for the ColecoVision and it was a very good port. Sure, it was missing the conveyor belt level it was missing uh, the intermissions, you know, the animated intermissions and stuff, but so was the NES version. And the NES version was also missing the conveyor belt. These versions, the Donkey Kong for the NES and Donkey Kong for the ColecoVision, weren't worlds apart, at least compared to the two systems. And it, they weren't different enough for me to buy the NES version. Yes, the ColecoVision version had some faults, now, when Mario would grab a hammer, he was invincible in the ColecoVision version. Nothing could hurt him, as opposed to just powerful in the NES and arcade versions where he, he grabs a hammer, he can hit a barrel, but he can still be hit if he mistimes it. But in the ColecoVision version, he becomes invincible. Also, in the ColecoVision version, if you tap up a second time on the controller, you go faster. So there's some different, there are more differences between the original Donkey Kong in the arcades than the ColecoVision than there are between the original arcade and the NES. The NES version is a little bit more of an accurate port than the ColecoVision version, but not enough for me to shell out 30 bucks. You know, I, I had a job at this point, but I still wanted to be careful about what I bought. I still wanted to make good choices. And at that point, it just didn't seem smart to buy a version of Donkey Kong that wasn't a huge upgrade over what I already had. Donkey Kong Jr., kind of the same situation. 
Both versions are missing the animated intermissions, but the NES version did have the hideout level that was missing from the ColecoVision version. Now this almost made me buy the black box version of Donkey Kong Jr. It almost made me want to get the game because of the missing level, but it wasn't quite enough to push me over the edge. Like I said, I got my NES late in 87, and then on into 88, I was playing it like crazy. And during this wonderful time period for the console, some amazing games were coming out, like Ghosts and Goblins. Now, even though this game can be a little frustrating, and it's harder than the arcade version, it's still a pretty solid port in my opinion, and I still love it. Akari Warriors has its fault, but check it out. Am I gonna get uh, this amazing looking game over a crusty old arcade port? Yeah, even a retro gamer like me wanted the newer stuff, like Akari Warriors. And Contra, an absolute no-brainer. Wow, what a great game. There were just so many awesome games released in 87 and 88 that sort of distracted from me from wanting to get all the black box titles, especially for games like Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., where I already had really good versions of them. And where the NES, it also, it frustrated me a little bit. And you could even call this a third reason. Nintendo frustrated me a little bit by not making these pretty much perfect ports because the NES certainly was capable of having near-perfect ports of Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. It was frustrating. They left out the conveyor belt level in Donkey Kong, and it was frustrating that they left out the animated intermissions for both games. This was a big deal back in the day. A lot of us uh, took, you know, now who cares if, you know, as a matter of fact, sometimes when I'm playing Donkey Kong now, I'm like, okay, the intermission, get it over with. I want to get to the gameplay. But back then, it seemed like a, a significant uh, omission of the intermissions. Anyway, it's nice to have those intermissions. I do enjoy them and some of the modern homebrews. So anyway, um, but at the time especially, I just, I thought, Nintendo, are you crazy? You can make these amazing games like Super Mario Brothers and you can't do a near arcade perfect port of Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Jr. What am I missing here? So I declined those games in favor of other games and in favor of just continuing to play my ColecoVision version. But what I did do, uh, just a little short time later, when Nintendo very wisely came out with Donkey Kong Classics and put Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. on one cartridge in this beautiful cartoon-like box, this orange, very distinctive color. I think this really looks great. It really pops on the shelf, the manual, and the cartridge, of course, having the same art. I just think that's a great looking set. And I got it used at, it would have been Funko Land or the very first year or two of GameStop. This would have been uh, late 90s or very early 2000s. I went ahead and picked up uh, this really cool compilation title. Now, yeah, it would have been cool if they would have put Donkey Kong Junior Math or if they would have put, you know, another game or two in the compilation. But hey, two, I'll take them. Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong uh, Junior for just $8. I can be a more of a completionist at least a little bit with my Donkey Kong games. And uh, yeah, so instead of paying 60 for two bl brand new black box titles of games that I kind of already had, you know, at least the ColecoVision versions, I was more than happy to pay $8 for this really cool cover art for a compilation title of both games. And then, uh, you know, there you go. So now I do have um, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. for the NES, but I still don't own the black box titles. And I kind of wish I would have bought the black box titles back in the day, because now they are very hard to find, especially complete in box. And it would be nice to have those on my shelf. But hey, back then, I was just buying what I wanted to play, what I wanted to collect, and I didn't consider collecting those games that important, although they would be nice to have today. Let me know in the comments, did you buy what black box NES titles are your favorites? Did you have Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr.? Do you think they're different enough from the ColecoVision versions to warrant purchasing them? Anything else you want to talk about Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., the black box titles, I'm all ears. I would love to hear from you. Now, the reason Daisy is in this video is because not only is she cute, but it was thundering outside and she got a little scared and she came over here and was jumping around and I thought she was gonna knock over my light or my camera or whatever, or I just thought uh, she might want to be cuddled. Made, 
you know, a little more comfortable and secure with the crazy weather outside. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. We will talk to you guys in another video.